Interesting, uh, James. I, I, I did think at the time, you know, through the debate, it, Walt's not his best format, this, the debate, uh, looking for common ground everywhere he could. He's got a very different style. I did think maybe Josh Shapiro of Pennsylvania might have had a different approach. I think that would have been an interesting matchup. But can I ask you, what did you think of that, uh, that answer when I said um, earlier, he, he didn't answer forcefully, I don't think, when asked, did, did Trump lose that last election? He said, I want to focus on the future. He spun it well but it looked to me like one of the weakest spots for him. Look, it was a weak spot, um, but all in all, though, I think it was a very strong performance. And, yeah, look, he could have had a clearer answer about that, but I think what he also did there was he pivoted to something that I think most people find or should find very concerning, which is the way the left, particularly the Democrats, um, and we've had Kamala Harris say this, we've had Tim Waltz say this, we've had people like John Kerry on tape saying this, basically saying that, you know, the First Amendment is an obstacle. The First Amendment needs to be limited in various ways that, you know, the government should decide what's true and what isn't. And that, to me, I think, mm. is really the real fundamental uh, issue with democracy here, where democracy is going, what democracy looks like. And yeah. I think Walt's, I was sort of Vance was correct to point out that at the end of the day, there was a peaceful transfer of power. And you know, it's not like there were tanks on the steps of the Capitol or anything like that. You know, power transferred. Biden came into office. You know, everything went on. Um, and if you want to talk, the one thing about democracy he didn't talk about, though, was the way in which Kamala Harris was basically, you know, uh, levered into the role in a way that we've never seen before in the United States without a single primary, primary vote. Kosha, what was your assessment of that? Um, as I say, it, it, I, th I thought it was the weak spot. Uh, Waltz had warmed up a bit, um, but he was he did fumble quite a bit. I want to get your thoughts as well on Waltz, where he called himself a knucklehead and how he misspeaks, and he did that quite a few times. We'll do that after we speak to Annalise Nielsen. But just on that one question about the democratic and peaceful transfer of power, Waltz seemed to sharpen up his message... Vance seemed to wobble a little after what was, and I think we've all agreed, was an emphatic performance from the Republican vice presidential candidate, Kosher. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I think I agree with your assessment uh, that he spun it and maybe didn't come out as forcefully, but I understand why, and that is that the American people don't actually care about that issue anymore. January 6th has been adjudicated and adjudicated in so many forums, and uh, they are focused about cost of living, immigration, and all of that. So that's hence why he didn't really want to get into it more and pivot to being more forward-looking. That said, he could have gone a little bit further. I, I think what his pivot did, which was smart, was say, well, you know, we have reserved the right to contest any election. America has a long history of contested elections, going all the way back to its foundations. And uh, this last election wasn't fair. That's kind of what he was trying to say in, in terms of censorship and everything else. He could have gone further and just list the litany of things that the other side has done that is also, quote, a threat to democracy, such as suing to take Trump off the ballot unsuccessfully, such as trying to imprison him where he's facing 700 years of, of potential maximum jail time, trying to bankrupt his businesses, trying on the other side, you know, pushing away Biden and not having an open primary for Democrats. He could have done that. Um, but I think he, again, just is, was laser focused on what matters to the American people right now and not getting too combative. Um, and so overall, even if he didn't go very strongly, it was probably a, a wise move. Uh, and then to your second question about Walls, you know, I kind of came away feeling a little bit empathetic or sorry for him. In a way, he just came across as this really Midwestern nice guy. That is how he's been packaged. When you dig into his policies, a lot of people on the other side find them actually quite uh, outside of the mainstream. But he comes across as a centrist, moderate, nice guy, but not the person that you want leading the free world across the table from very, very tough adversarial figures globally and domestically. He just didn't come across commanding. He just came across sort of as a nice guy, as you said, calling himself a knucklehead and being self-deprecating and all of that. Uh, I'm not <laughs> sure that's what the country wants right now or that's where the electorate is.